Good evening, and welcome to Community TV of Santa Cruz County. I'm Lou Chuosto, and uh, you're here with us, uh, and it's called Let's Talk with Lou, and that's what we're going to do this evening. And we've got two very distinguished uh, guests, and they're going to talk about education. Uh, it doesn't get any better than this. Uh, I'm always amazed at what the public brings uh, to the uh, to the shows and, and they ask questions and I've been asked for some time uh, to talk about education so we've got two of the best this evening we have uh, Chancellor George Blumenthal and he is uh, at UCSE and he's on his way out he's retiring but he's been there uh, for a lot of years uh, since 1972 and welcome uh, to the show uh, uh, Professor Blumenthal thank you for being here and thank you it's a real pleasure to be here Lou thank you for having me okay, very good thank you and we have another uh, uh, kind of a key person uh, at uh, Cabrillo College, uh, and that's Al Smith, and he is the chair uh, of the Board of uh, Cabrillo's Trustees, and he's been there for 24 years. He's also a practicing attorney uh, in, in one of the biggest law firms in town, and we're going to get a whole bunch of good information about Cabrillo, and uh, thank you for being here, Al. Very pleased to be here. Thank you, Lou. Yeah, my pleasure to be here with you. Um, this evening, I'd like to talk about uh, the things that are near and dear to your heart. And certainly, uh, uh, we'll start out uh, with Al Smith, and that is Cabrillo College. Um, first of all, if you could tell us a little bit about, uh, well, let me talk about you first of all, because you bring so much depth and so many things in, uh, uh, to the table as a, a trustee. Uh, he is a partner in uh, uh, the Grunsky uh, Law Firm in uh, Watsonville. and. Um, he has been uh, at a, a University of Pacific uh, Graduate School uh, of Law um, uh, person uh, for some time, a Vietnam vet, a graduate of Leadership Santa Cruz uh, County, graduate of, uh, of Santa Cruz uh, Farm Bureau, and then uh, the uh, past chair of the Pajaro Valley Chamber of Commerce, uh, present, uh, presently a member of the Santa Cruz Area Chamber of Commerce, and 24 year, as I mentioned, uh, on, on the Cabrillo College Board, uh, Board of Trustees and um, has been the president uh, of the board for four years and a 39-year resident of Santa Cruz. Um, and that brings a lot uh, to uh, Cabrillo College because you have a lot of depth in all that you do. Um, let's talk a little bit about what a board member at trust, uh, at the trustee does uh, at, at just in general, and then specifically we'll talk more about Cabrillo. Okay, well a trustee is uh, in the California system is the local control and oversight for the college. We're the ones that connect the community to the college. Uh, the more concrete things we do are uh, we are the ones who hire the president of the college. We're the ones that approve the budgets. We're the ones that adopt the policies and the procedures that call out within the scope of the uh, education code uh, how the college will be run. Okay. So in, in, in terms of uh, doing what a trustee does, uh, you uh, bring in uh, the new president, uh, and we do have a new one uh, this year, uh, or I guess it's, he's going into his t uh, second year, uh, and that, that's uh, uh, Matt uh, Wettstein. And uh, we, um, uh, as uh, members of the community, uh, get to go to a college usually with a fairly reduced uh, uh, tuition uh, because it's, uh, many times it's, uh, when you look at it, 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 looks, it appears that it's, it's, it's fully funded by the state or some uh, entity, uh, and, and so our tuition actually offsets a part of the real true cost at, at, a, at a community college. Um, and then what you do on the Board of Trustees, you oversee uh, the person that runs it, uh, and that is the president. That's correct. Uh, and then you're also involved uh, in being able to uh, see, a, uh, see the, uh, uh, what's going on uh, with the budget and how things are spent. Um, and how many uh, students do we currently have at Cabrillo College? Glad you asked that question. Uh, I think right now we've actually had a little bit of a declining enrollment, but we have uh, uh, the latest data is 12,239 full-time equivalents. Okay. So um, you talk, uh, we, we mentioned, you mentioned that, and let's talk a little bit about that. Generally uh, speaking, uh, when the economy is good, uh, when it, and right now it's very rich, uh, usually uh, uh, kids uh, are working. Uh, the young people out there are working, uh, sometimes full-time, part-time. But they're they're busy, uh, and then if the economy goes into a recession, uh, then usually uh, we have a, a spike in, in the amount of kids that go back to school or finish their uh, degrees, uh, their AS or A degrees, or, and then transfer out. Uh, so, uh, in terms of uh, although we're a little bit lean right now, 
Um, can you think of any ways, uh, it, it, have you thought through or has the board come up with anything to enhance some of our uh, populace is kind of decreasing a little bit at the school? Well, we are, uh, I have strong partnerships with all the high schools in the county. I think we take uh, something like 70% of Aptos high graduates and close to that number of Watsonville high graduates. I think half of the Santa Cruz high graduates move on to Cabrillo. So uh, um, there's only so many kids graduating from high school. And, and uh, so we try to attract uh, returning students. Uh, community colleges are uh, famous for allowing people to come in and um, uh, develop work skills, uh, develop new work skills, mm -hmm. enhance their existing work skills. Mm -hmm. And we have people that return from the service, people that uh, were not ready or able to attend college right after high school and we take those kind of kids too. So we try to have that outreach going all the time. Okay, so we've got uh, kids coming in, let's say from our local high schools. Uh, and I might say, uh, it, and I think that, uh, uh, that it's, 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 you never lose anything, I think by doing a two year, uh, your lower division stuff at Cabrillo, because it's such a high quality uh, institution. Uh, one of the best in the state and, and one of the best in the country. Uh, and I would say that um, if, if somebody were to choose to do their first two years there, and the lower division uh, and get, you know, let's say go to a UC, uh, that they would uh, come out with a very comparable education uh, it's in, in, in lieu of, let's say, going to, to all of, uh, at a four-year school because uh, the quality is so high there. Not, not all community colleges can, uh, can say that, but at Cabrillo College, uh, we can say that. Uh, and, uh, and I think it's important uh, for our listening audience to know that. Um, and there's a, a program out, uh, if they come from the high school, uh, they get uh, free tuition uh, for a year. Let's talk about that a little bit. Okay, so it's a, a program called uh, College Promise, and it offers uh, high school graduates the opportunity to take a year of college course work without paying for it. Um, well, let me stop, without paying for it. Without paying a dime for the tuition. They okay. still have to okay. pay to live in Santa Cruz County, which yes. of course is a challenge. Yes. They have to eat and they have to buy their books, but the yes. tuition is free. Okay. If they meet certain uh, uh, qualifications, they, um, they have to enroll right after high school. They have to, um, uh, take a full load of yes. coursework, which is 12 units. Yeah. Uh, they need to complete a uh, financial aid, uh, the FAFSA, FAFSA application, just like they were going on mm -hmm. and getting financial aid anywhere else. And uh, they must complete a student orientation program because we want these uh, students to be successful. Mm -hmm. We find that we can, can reach out to them and mm -hmm. orient them to, to Cabrillo. Mm -hmm. They're gonna be as more successful students. And they also have to participate in an individualized um, uh, education plan with a counselor at the college. Mm -hmm. And then they must maintain a, a, a grade point average uh, in order to continue. What's the GPA that they have to uh, maintain to uh, stay in it? I think it's just a passing is all. So two point probably. Yeah. Okay, good. So, uh, and I, I guess I want to reiterate that uh, for, uh, for those uh, parents out there, uh, and especially in a, in a high uh, rent uh, or, or mortgage area, whatever, you know, the housing uh, cost uh, area that we're in, that uh, it, it gives, it, it lends some, to some, uh, some, some good things to be able to not say, okay, I'm gonna go into debt for my son or daughter's four year uh, school, uh, and I'll go into debt for their junior and senior year. And, and what I like to see is maybe, uh, if those kids are really uh, ambitious and driven, and the kids that get into four year schools, generally speaking, uh, uh, I would say they're probably headed to grad school uh, eventually, and maybe save for uh, uh, two years of grad school uh, where there's not a lot of help uh, as there is as an undergraduate, but then maybe do, two, do their two years at home. And I know uh, when my son went to school, I think everybody go, uh, goes uh, through this uh, when they go away to uh, college, the first year is an adjustment, uh, and it's hard. Uh, so you can have some really bright kids, and, and the first year is an adjustment, and it could cost them maybe a B, I don't know, but uh, I mean, they're still gonna get where they're going, but it is uh, it's more of a challenge. Yeah, we have some very, as uh, George I'm sure knows, we have some, uh, uh, UCSC is our most popular destination. I think we placed 100 and, around 150 students. At, I think slightly uh, more than that. Maybe. maybe 160 last year. His his numbers and our numbers are from different sources, so it's right in that <laughs> right in that range. You know how numbers are, but it's it's right in that range within 10 or so. So we put them there. We put as many uh, students at UCSC as we do any other mm -hmm. UC 
campus in the mm -hmm. state. So it's about, I think, actually more than half go there. Mm -hmm. um, and the kids, when they get there, they do well. They yeah. do at least yeah. as well yeah. as a student who's been there from the beginning. Sure. Uh, we think that's because these are often more mature students, sometimes they're returning veterans, mm -hmm. sometimes they're kids who had a, a year to think about it, sometimes it's because they're working hard and, and it just maybe means something more to them. Who knows what the reasons are, but our st uh, students at the UC campuses and UCSC are successful and they do at least as well, often better, than a student who was able to attend from the freshman year. I, I could just add that yes. uh, Cabrillo is by far our largest feeder school. Uh, we get more students from Cabrillo than any other community college in California. And that uh, what Al just said is absolutely right. Our transfer students graduate just as fast as our native junior students. Mm -hmm. And the grade point average that they have during their time at Santa Cruz is just as good, if not even slightly better, than our native junior students. So they, they're successful. And the reason has to do with the quality of the education they get at Cabrillo. Excellent. I like to hear that. I, I, I've got a personal uh, testimony uh, in our family. Uh, my uh, daughter-in-law is a school psychologist. Uh, and she did all her lower division um, at Cabrillo. And it, you, you, I think you've heard this uh, story. It's an amazing story. She transferred to uh, Berkeley uh, and, and did wonderful there. And, and you know, Berkeley is one of the finest institutions in the state. Uh, and um, and she attributed a lot of her success at Berkeley and then on to graduate school. Uh, kind of uh, at the core of who she was was uh, learning the skill set to, to really study at Cabrillo. Uh, and, and in my mind, I put those. Uh, in the same category, you know, a, a, Ber uh, U a UC school uh, in Cabrillo, I, I, I think that the quality is there. Uh, and especially uh, for our kids that are high school students uh, thinking where to go, if they're going to go away, UC or, or Cabrillo right here in their under, uh, under mom and pop's uh, roof. And so they don't have to go through some of the adjustments that traditional, you know, going away for a four year school, uh, you know, and you have to adjust to. Yeah. And I would just say that, you know, even if they are not ready to uh, make that decision whether it's going to be a UC campus or it's going to be some other type of uh, uh, education. I mean, we have some very famous people in California who have uh, begun their educational career through community colleges. Uh, one of the famous ones, of course, is Mr. Schwarzenegger, but another one is the Supreme Court Justice of California. Is a uh, went to uh, I think Sacramento City College, if I'm not mistaken. Um, the, uh, Tom Hanks, the movie actor, went to community college. Mm -hmm. um, there's just a whole variety of people who started out for whatever reason mm -hmm. in community colleges and went on to further success. And Robin Williams, too. And Robin Williams, too. I think too. he was at uh, the College Hills. of Marin, I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we've got some famous, uh, we've got uh, some of the best schools, I think, in the country uh, uh, right here. Competition is tough to get in, though. In my day, it was quite a bit easier, you know, but these days, it's competitive. These mm -hmm. kids are, it's like full-time jobs for them. It'll you know, study at the high school level, then to get in and do a bunch of other stuff besides, you know, they're spinning all kinds of plates. Mm -hmm. You know, they want the 4.5 or 4.4, and in addition to that, all the other stuff that goes along with it. Well, you pointed out something that some people, kids, whether they have parents who can afford it or not, uh, oftentimes it's a student who is paying for it themselves. They say, do I want to take this two years of, of tuition, and should I go to the community college, yeah. get a, a good education experience as they would at, at the UC campus, and save that two years and use it for my master's program mm -hmm. or my whatever program it is later on. And, you know, people think about that. Yeah, yeah they, they truly do, yeah, especially uh, with the, the high cost of housing, and it, certainly that's uh, in the news. Uh, and if they were to go off and, and get an off-campus, uh, uh, you know, a uh, room or something like that, the cost is just, uh, it's just, uh, you know, really, really there. Uh, and that adds to the whole uh, overall cost of, of, of college in general. Um, let's talk a little bit about uh, the, um, the uh, uh, about teaching at Cabrillo College. Um, you know, I know some, uh, some generalities uh, about Cabrillo, but you've got some specific uh, stuff that you bring in, and again, I think you want to uh, uh, shine a light on a couple uh, uh, great teachers uh, there that have been doing a great job for some time, and they all do a wonderful job. I, I do. I, uh, Cabrillo prides itself on the quality of its, uh, of its teaching. Um, these are people who, uh, that's what they do every day. Uh, they're not uh, necessarily uh, interested in doing research, uh, but uh, I wanted to talk just for a moment about a program we call Guided Pathways uh, at Cabrillo. It's a new program uh, 
Cabrillo was one of 20 colleges, uh, community colleges out of 108 in the state who was selected for this program. And it's designed to uh, deal with a problem uh, where, um, uh, again, focusing on student success, we have uh, kids who uh, begin their journey. They're not sure exactly what they want to do. They can take, um, they take uh, an anthropology class or a biology class or I'm going to wait for my organic chem or whatever it happens to be. Mm -hmm. And they end up with uh, being there for four or five years, mm -hmm. uh, taking 100 units, 120 units before they get out. And it's easy to run out of money. Mm -hmm. It's easy to run out of interest. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's just not a, uh, the most uh, successful way to, uh, to move uh, through, the, through the system. So this Guided Pathways is exactly that. It's a program to try and help students um, and, uh, by providing them a um, clarity as to the, the path through the college system, uh, how to enter that path, uh, mm -hmm. how to stay on that path, mm -hmm. and to ensure that while on that path they're getting the adequate learning. And there are two um, teachers at Cabrillo that I wanted just to talk about as an example who are the leaders of this program. One of them's uh, Dr. Isabel O'Connor, and the other one is Marcy Allen Craig. And I'm gonna kind of talk about them just for a second here. Uh, Isabel is an interesting person. She has a, a bachelor's in elementary education she got in Spain before she came to the United States. So she's an immigrant. Uh, she went to, guess what? Community College mm -hmm. in Los Angeles to mm -hmm. learn English, mm -hmm. and then she went to um, uh, Los An or excuse me to Loyola Marymount and got a bachelor's in European Studies, and then um, she uh, went on to UCLA and earned a, a PhD in um, Medieval Spanish mm -hmm. and Islamic History, and then she went to the University of Indiana. She um, uh, was a member of the faculty, uh, and then uh, she was chair of the history department. Uh, she received several teaching awards while she was there, mm -hmm. uh, including the in Univ Indiana University South Bend Distinguished Teaching Award, and um, she was a member of the Indiana University Faculty Colloquium for Excellence in Teaching. Um, she's published numerous articles and has a, uh, a book out on the history of uh, Muslims in medieval Spain. Hmm. Uh, the, uh, she's one of, the, not only the first in her family to um, obtain a college degree, but she's the first in her family to graduate from high school. Mm -hmm. So she understands what some of the challenges for some of our students are from her kind of organic standpoint. Um, and she is one of the two leaders of our um, Guided Pathways program. The other one is a, a woman named Marcy Allen Quaig. She has a bachelor's in women's studies and creative writing from an esteemed UC campus near here. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, a master's in uh, media technology and creative writing from Antioch College. And she's been with Cabrillo since 1991. Um, she is uh, taking this year to focus on the uh, Guided Pathways program. She's a winner of the 2010 Hayward Award for Excellence in Education, sponsored by the Foundation for Community Colleges. And in 2016, she won our uh, Teaching Emmy or uh, mm -hmm. Oscar for, it's called the Floyd L. Younger Award for Teaching Excellence, which is a um, uh, self-generating um, um, award and nominated by the colleagues and the students at Cabrillo. It's an esteemed award. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, well, we deserve these are just two examples of two of the wonderful people that Cabrillo has that students who, who go there will experience and who are leading our guided pathway program. Very good, very good. So, we've got some good things happening at Cabrillo, uh, and, and I like the way that you said uh, one of our most esteemed uh, colleges, and then uh, kind of gestured uh, to Chancellor uh, Blumenthal. It's true. Uh, yeah, because <laughs> we've got some of the finest education uh, available right here uh, in, in the uh, community between UC uh, Santa Cruz and, and Cabrillo. Uh, before we get uh, away from you, Al, we'll talk a little bit more um, about uh, some of the challenges that are going on right now. Uh, and they're real at, at Cabrillo. And if we could talk about maybe one or two of those uh, and then talk about some ideas that you might have in terms of getting through those, uh, and what are they? Uh, what would you say is maybe the top two challenges? Well, it, it could, I would say that the, the top challenge is to 
uh, allow our students and our faculty to have affordable housing. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just not unique to us. Uh, we've uh, shared that uh, experience with um, uh, Dr. Blumenthal's uh, uh, faculty. Um, there's some interesting ideas that are out there that people are talking about. Um, Dr. Wetzing, our current president, is uh, one of 15 members of a statewide community college. So, like you know, there's 108 colleges, so they pick 15, and mm -hmm. Matt's one of them. Okay. Uh, to study the problem. And it's some really interesting uh, things they're doing. There are opportunities in some colleges with parking to develop perhaps uh, uh, parking and housing uh, mm -hmm. uh, cooperative partnerships, uh, private uh, public partnerships. Um, some colleges, it's uncommon in the community college system, but some colleges actually have dorms that are uh, privately or publicly operated. Um, community college? Community colleges. Mm -hmm. oh, very there's good. a few of those, I think. Okay. Mr. Santa Barbara, I think, might have them. I'm not I sure so. which ones there are, but there's a few of them out there. Mm -hmm. And um, so we're, we're, uh, that is a real challenge, uh, um, trying to um, take our students who are challenged by the economy and allow them to take full advantage of the educational opportunities in order to, to blossom and become productive members of society in the way they want to be mm -hmm. and to justify the taxpayers' expense and investment in Cabrillo is, is a, a challenge. And we are, uh, we have different economic challenges than George does. His funding comes in, through a different kind of conduit. We're part of the, similar to the K-12 system, the K-14 system, and mm -hmm. our tax money comes in a whole different way than than George's does, but uh, we both have uh, similar problems when it comes to housing. Mm -hmm. So what, that's going to be one of our, our bigger uh, issues that I think we're, we're going to be challenged with for some time, and uh, and we might uh, we might look at the, uh, all kinds of different ways to uh, address that. But it, nonetheless, it's going to be here for some time, uh, and it looks like that it's it's here to stay. Um, certainly, there's some uh, challenging. Uh, uh, ways to you know to take take that on uh, but you know there's not a cure all for for sure uh, uh, with that no silver uh, bullet yeah yeah exactly um okay good uh and how about um any other any other issues you can think of that uh, uh, might be a challenge uh, in the near let's say two or three years uh, at cabrillo that you, you'd want to talk about well we we have uh, an issue that is um, um it's not going to go away and that is that because of the funding system uh, for yes. community colleges in California, there's uh, money generally made available to uh, pay salaries, to um, um, do certain limited maintenance on the on the college, mm -hmm. but uh, it doesn't pay for everything. And um, uh, community colleges are very similar to K-12s and that uh, or K-6s, and they have to go out to the voters for bond issues. Mm -hmm in order to um, allow them to um, maintain and uh, improve their educational facilities. Um, although teaching has changed, physical demands for teaching have changed and mm -hmm. the technology has gotten very good so now you can have you know, the smart classrooms with the boards and all that sort of thing. You can also have classrooms that can be easily as you develop new classrooms, they can be easily converted for different purposes. Mm -hmm. Whereas before you might have a liberal arts wing and then you have a biology wing and you have geology over there. Mm -hmm. Now uh, with the, the new technology out there, you can uh, build a building that has the flexibility to respond to demand. So if we have, they discover something that is a big demand for it, we would be able it, with the right um, uh, uh, technology and buildings on campus to respond to that in a very quickly and we're just not able to do that right now and our infrastructure although it's uh, good quality uh, uh, there are some improvements we can make mm -hmm. very good very good it seems like uh, we just started but uh, it, it, we're, we're actually um, uh, clipping along we're almost halfway there I'm looking down at, at my uh, 
my, uh, my, my clock, and uh, so I'd like to get on to uh, Chancellor uh, Blumenthal. <coughs> Thank you so much, Al, for uh, that informative uh, bit of information. Uh, you, you just bring so much uh, uh, to the table in terms of talking about all the Thank things you. that uh, I'm sure that uh, are near and dear to your heart, you know, funding, uh, getting one of the best educations that our local kids can get, uh, housing, all those things uh, are certainly on the forefront and on a regular basis there in the newspaper and obviously you're very thoughtful uh, of each of them. So thank you uh, so much for that. And uh, as well, uh, having served on the Board of Trustees for 24 years um, in, in that dedication, uh, that is a volunteer position uh, and a lot of work goes into that. Uh, looking at a board docket and, and being uh, familiar with all the details, uh, of that board docket and then uh, ha having uh, been on the board for that many years uh, you have been ahead of the uh, board of trustees and so to be able to uh, do the kinds of things you do uh, uh, freely uh, is, is certainly our, our hats are off to you thank you for your service to the community thank you way. thank you so much um, chancellor blumenthal I i'm going to uh, give a little bit of a background uh, just an amazing uh, uh, individual and uh, uh, I'll, I'll probably embarrass you a little bit, but I, I get to do that. But, uh, George Blumenthal uh, is UC Santa Cruz 10th, cha 10th Chancellor. Uh, he's, uh, he joined the campus in 1972 uh, as faculty member uh, in astronomy and astrophysics and was named Chancellor in September of 2007 after serving uh, as acting Chancellor for 14 months. Uh, your accomplishment uh, as Chancellor include advanced student and faculty diversity, uh, growing philanthropy, uh, enhancing town grown cooperation and improving the academic standing of the university, which is, is, has been done very successfully. Uh, the campus witnessed a strong growth under uh, Blumenthal's watch and, and both Porter and Merrill Colleges were renovated and expanded uh, and Kresge uh, revitalization is on tap. All to uh, told, campus uh, has added roughly 260,000 square feet of space while also opening um, a satellite campus in Silicon Valley uh, and new facilities in Scotts Valley for hundreds of staff. Um, in the uh, past dozen years, the campus has also significantly grown undergraduates and graduate programs in a wide range of disciplines. Um, in 2010, uh, Chancellor Blumenthal received the Oliver Johnson Award for Distinguished Leadership in the Academic Senate, the top UC honor for service at both the statewide system program and campus levels. Uh, a local advocate for staff throughout the UC, and he received an outstanding senior leadership award from the Council of the University of California Staff Assemblies in 2012. Um, and a little bit about your uh, education, uh, received uh, at the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee the PhD in physics uh, and at UC uh, San Diego, and in 2011 it was awarded an honorary PhD in astrophysics and leadership in higher education from the University of Wisconsin. Whew. So you've done a lot for uh, not only just the university, uh, uh, Chancellor Blumenthal, but for our community as well. I, I, and again, I, um, I uh, hesitate to talk about some of the questions because we're going to talk about retirement. <laughs> so we're going to lose you to uh, the good life <laughs> or the better life, maybe. I don't know. Um, let's talk a little bit about that. But I'll, actually, I wanted to talk a little bit about, if we could, uh, Chancellor, what does uh, a, a chancellor do? Uh, you will have a, 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 you know, somebody replacing you. Uh, what do they do uh, at the school and the kinds of things that uh, might be, you know, uh, uh, you know, for you, uh, the goals that you might want, uh, want to have, how want to have taken a look at early on in your career? Uh, what do those kinds of things uh, amount to? So the chancellor is the chief executive officer of the campus, much as the president of Cabrillo is the chief executive of Cabrillo College. And in the role of chancellor, what I do is uh, not only does the buck stop on my desk uh, for the campus, but also I'm the face of the campus. In, in, with, within the university system, I have to advocate for UC Santa Cruz uh, amongst the UC campuses. Uh, I'm the face of the campus in terms of Sacramento and, frankly, in Washington, D.C. as well, as, uh, as we lobby for better treatment uh, by our legislative uh, friends. And then I also serve as the fundraiser in chief for the campus. Uh, one of the things you mentioned is we did do our very first comprehensive fundraising campaign, and, uh, and that took a lot of time and effort to do that. But that is the reality of the world we live in today at universities, that you have to be able to raise money. And that required some culture change on the campus. But we did it, and we finished it early, and we raised more than we said we would. So uh, I feel very pleased about that. Those are the kinds of things that we, that we do. And uh, as a chancellor, and that's what I look for in any successor as well, someone who can um, really understand the culture of the campus um, and 
UC Santa Cruz has an interesting culture. It's a culture where um, we, we, we revere questioning authority. And um, there's no better authority figure to question than the <laughs> chancellor. Um, it's a, it, it is, you see Santa Cruz, uh, the, the other challenges are leadership. We, we need someone who uh, can raise money, can re represent the campus well, who can serve uh, the campus uh, and, and compete for uh, resources uh, and other things within the university system. And we need someone who basically can interact successfully with our community around the campus. So I think all of those characteristics are something that we really need in, in, in the next chancellor. I think they're all important. And I'd also mention uh, um, really a commitment to excellence. That probably should have been number one on my list. Uh, that's really important for a chancellor of a place like UC Santa Cruz. Okay. Uh, very good. In terms of, uh, let's say, let's talk about philanthropy uh, for a while. Uh, funding comes in, uh, it comes through uh, tuition fees you know, for the students, and then it's uh, augmented uh, by the state. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, okay, so we, we, we have that happening. What kind of things would, uh, let's say, uh, donors uh, be thinking in terms of where, where, where is the money going and, and for what kind of projects? Uh, it, it, and uh, how, how might they think, uh, you know, feel good uh, about that because there's a lot of uh, uh, great gifts uh, to the university, as there are uh, to Cabrillo. Um, but uh, tell us a little bit about that if you can, Chancellor. Sure. First, as a quick backgrounder, uh, back when I was a student at the University of California, San Diego, um, basically the state paid for 100% of education for students. Mm -hmm. Today at UC Santa Cruz, we collect more money from our student tuition than we collect from the state of California. Okay more money from tuition. So we've gone from being a state supported to a state augmented mm -hmm. university and my goal has always been to keep us from becoming a state tolerated university. <laughs> uh, um, but that degree of uh, funding doesn't cover everything. And so uh, what donors have allowed us to do, what philanthropy has allowed us to do, is to add programs and to do things that might not have been possible otherwise, either for students or for facilities or for our faculty or research programs. For example, uh, many of our donors have endowed scholarships that have allowed students who could otherwise not have afforded to go to college to mm -hmm. actually be able to attend. Mm -hmm. Some of our donors uh, support specific programs. One I'm particularly proud of is called the Chancellor's Undergraduate Internship Program, mm -hmm. where we have about 35 or 40 students a year who do internships, but then meet throughout the year uh, to talk about uh, how the university operates and come to a better understanding of what the university is structured. That kind of program only can exist because of support from, from our donors. Mm -hmm. uh, another example is the brand new quarry, uh, uh, amphitheater. We just reopened the quarry. It had money from a variety of sources, but one important source was some of our donors. That, and that's just a, the tip of the iceberg. We had gifts, for example, that uh, revitalized the barn at the base of campus. That's mm -hmm. something that community has used. It's something that we use, and it's now our center for agri uh, where our, our, our center of agroecology is located. So. Um, there's just a lot of things that donors do that we would not have been able to do otherwise. If we can talk a little bit about, uh, thank you for that, uh, Chancellor, uh, uh, good information. Um, uh, students uh, that, that might be eligible for uh, uh, monies that are coming in from, uh, from donations, uh, so would, would a, let's say a student coming in, would they qualify uh, or try to qualify for some of those funds uh, prior to getting in or once they get in, and how does that, whole, how does that function? Well, it depends. It, it really depends, and it's complicated because students who come to the university from low-income families mm -hmm. are eligible for financial aid from other sources as well, mm -hmm. in many cases, but not in all cases. And I'll give you some examples. We have something at UC called the Blue and Gold Plan, which guarantees that any student whose family income is below $80,000 a year does not pay tuition if, if they qualify for financial aid. So, um, uh, so those students pay zero tuition. Uh, now, they still have to live, and uh, the state does allocate money in something called Cal Grants to provide mm -hmm. uh, support for our poorest students. And uh, there's also federal support in the form of Pell Grants from the federal government. Uh, UC Santa Cruz has a very, you know, we have something like, uh, uh, I don't remember the exact number, but we have more than double uh, the percentage of Pell Grant students of, of any other uh, can, uh, public university outside of UC or outside of California. So we have lar lots of students who qualify for the strongest form of financial aid. So where do scholarships come in? Scholarships come in because 
not all students qualify for all of these programs. For example, a great example are DACA students, students uh, 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 who are undocumented. Those students don't qualify for federal financial aid, even though California provides some degree of financial aid. There are other students who, uh, who, uh, who come from families that can't meet the expectations that the university's financial aid has on them. Every student has to do some self-help. And, um, and some students, for a variety of reasons, are unable to do that. So scholarships mm -hmm. can make the difference mm -hmm. to them as well. And finally, scholarships uh, also give, besides giving them the ability to live and go to school, they sometimes fund things like research programs that students will do. Our undergraduate students, uh, by the time they, for, for UC Santa Cruz, 70% of our bachelor's degree students have done some research by the time that they've graduated. 70%? 70%. 70%. Wow. So it's something I'm very, very proud of. So they probably do very well in, in graduate school. Absolutely. Right? Yeah, that's, that's a huge thing. So uh, scholarships yeah. can also, or funding uh, from donors can also help fund some of the research that they do. Some of it is cheap, but some of the times it involves travel, for example. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So it sounds like the, uh, that uh, if somebody's uh, at lower income, 80000 per household, uh, they would most likely get uh, uh, their, their tuition for free. Yes. Uh, okay. Now, now, again, the housing is still there, and there's other costs to offset that. And, of course, being one of the most expensive uh, counties in the state, uh, certainly there's some other significant costs there. But yes. the tuition part of it, uh, that's amazing, uh, and that's, that's great. So that would be an encouragement for parents out there that are thinking, well, what do I do? How do I pay for this? Because I think some people just aren't aware of how the system works, especially those uh, uh, children that are coming from uh, uh, lower income uh, uh, housing uh, houses, uh, uh, households that, let's say, might not have been college graduates themselves to, to have not gone through that and realize that, uh, that there's money out there. I, I know at the, at the Ivy Leagues, at Stanford, some of the other uh, uh, major institutions uh, out there that, that got a, have a great uh, following, uh, once you get in, generally speaking, it, you're not going to be paying, paying very much for tuition because uh, there's so much foundation money uh, out there. And, and that's what we're talking about. We're talking about donors mm. uh, that buy into the college and buy into the experience of wanting to leave a legacy uh, and wanting to leave uh, something uh, about themselves that can be remembered by. And so it's available, it sounds Absolutely. like. Absolutely. And I just want to remind you that at UC Santa Cruz, more than 40% of our students, our undergraduate students, are first-generation students. Neither parent graduated from college. So these are not people who have a background that understands the college system. So one of our failures has been to actually communicate to potential parents adequately the availability of these blue and gold, of the blue and gold plan that sure. allows them to go tuition fee. That's a continuing challenge that we have to meet. Good. Well, you know, a big part of uh, uh, this show is to be able to get those kinds of uh, bits of information out there uh, where somebody might not have known something. And, and certainly just we're talking about it like we are, uh, I think, helps that whole uh, process. People just to be kind of in the know. Uh, and I bet you, uh, I would imagine, uh, you know, a great percentage, probably greater than we could imagine, people just didn't know, oh, there's no tuition. If you're in 80,000, you know, not a bad income, but for uh, uh, when you have one or two or three people in college, boy, the, the money goes and, and it goes quick. Um, well, that's, that's good information. You know, uh, if we could talk uh, a little bit, uh, Chancellor, about uh, what um, would you say that uh, uh, UCSE is, is most noted for? Uh, certainly all the programs are excellent there, uh, but is there any uh, area of studies that, let's say, uh, you see a lot of uh, uh, kids coming in from uh, around the uh, state that would say, well, I want to go to UCSE because of, if you can kind of fill in the blank with that. There's a lot, I'm sure, there, but any particular programs that you like? There's several programs that really attract a lot of students and several programs that are really known nationally and internationally. So in terms of known internationally and nationally, uh, my own program, Astronomy and Astrophysics, has always been uh, world famous. I mean, it sounds a little bit like I'm patting myself on the back, but uh, yeah. it is certainly yeah. true that we are uh, a strong international program and our graduate program in Astronomy and Astrophysics attracts the best students from around the world. In terms of overall popularity, uh, two of the biggest programs that actually are remarkably popular are psychology, which is mm -hmm. one of our largest major, mm -hmm. and now more recently, uh, computer science. Mm -hmm. And in a sense, computer science isn't a surprise given the economy that we live in and our, our, uh, our location near Silicon Valley. Uh, but our computer science program has grown almost exponentially over the last few years. So we can't even keep up with the growth of demand for computer science. So we're struggling to do that. We've actually even limited the number of students who can major in computer science as we struggle to add more faculty so we can accommodate all of the students who would like to come here and do that. And then uh, the uh, Baskin School of Engineering, can we talk a little bit about that? Sure. Yep. 
So uh, we, have a, we have a school of engineering, the Baskin School of Engineering. Baskin School of Engineering is, is still relatively young. It's, uh, you know, I forget, 20 years old, 20-some uh, years old. It's, it, it didn't start at the same time as the campus, and yet it's done a remarkable job since then. They have exceptionally strong programs, not just in computer science and computer engineering, but for example, they have a, uh, a program in biomolecular engineering, mm -hmm. which has become world famous. Uh, that's the program in which, uh, which houses David Hausler, who was the guy who mm. completed the Human Genome Project mm -hmm. and is one of the leading researchers in the world on cancer genomics. It includes uh, uh, folks studying stem cells. It includes folks studying uh, early, D you know, the anthropology of early DNA. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and how that has affected evolution of, of both humans and animals. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is a, that, that, that's a centerpiece of, of the Baskin School of Engineering that, that has been just tremendously successful. And uh, pre-med, uh, I've got some personal experience with uh, personal friends uh, that have done the pre-med program at UCSC and went on to medical school and they just did phenomenal. They came back and, and, and tell us it, it, it prepped them very well to go to UCSC. There's one particular uh, pre-med program that I think uh, shines above uh, many of the other ones, uh, uh, and, and maybe you can tell us a little bit about that, uh, that, how the students do so well in med school having gone through probably a couple programs, but the one I was thinking of. Well, the program that we have, the basic program on, on uh, health sciences tries to prepare students to go into any of the health sciences. It could be medicine, could be dentistry, could be veterinary medicine, for example. Yes. But um, not only does that program entail a very rigorous study of the science that you need to know in order to go to and succeed in medical school, but it also thinks about the, the whole person. For example, that program requires every student to attain a working knowledge of medical Spanish. Mm. Not just Spanish, but medical Spanish, and to do internships mm -hmm. within the community. A lot of those students do internships at, Capri at, at I'm sorry, at Dominican Hospital. Mm -hmm. Many of them do internships in Watsonville in communities, Spanish-speaking communities uh, that uh, um, really benefit from um, you know medical care and who, where where their their work as an intern really does make a difference. So those students are really committed, and that commitment comes through. Helps them in, helps them to get into medical school. Mm -hmm. and it helps them succeed once they get there. Amazing. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit more uh, about uh, your uh, uh, your sites insights about how the campus has changed, uh, but then also talk about uh, what what's your experience. Uh, what it's what has it been like at being so many years that you've been on the campus uh, in terms of uh, now that you have you know retirement uh, ahead of you. Um, you know what kind of those things. What are you thinking about? Um, it, with your experience uh, in terms of uh, the things that uh, you know that have been accomplished and changed, and, and do you have any uh, uh, insights in terms of where you'd like to see the school going? Uh, and once your predecessor comes on campus and does the things that they do uh, uh, so well, which uh, it's going to be some hard shoes to fill uh, for sure. Uh, but any any insights about uh, where you think the school is going, or where, where would you like to see things go? Well, let me say a little bit about where it's come from, because there's been so much change just in the years that I've been there. And then I'll yeah. say a few words about where I think we might go. Um, I came in 1972 as a very young assistant professor. I'd love to tell you I was 11 years old, but that's <laughs> not true. Um, and um, uh, when I arrived in Santa Cruz, uh, the community was very different than it is today. Mm -hmm. It was a very conservative community politically. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we had two Republicans representing us in the state legislature and a Republican representing us in Congress. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the biggest issue in the city of Santa Cruz when I arrived was whether or not Lighthouse Field should be turned into a shopping center. Mm -hmm. So it was a very, very different political environment. And so the community itself had enormous change. Well, of course, the campus changed enormously as well. I don't remember how many students were here when I arrived, but it was a few thousand only. Mm -hmm. And uh, so growing from a few thousand up to our current value of 19,000 or so mm -hmm. was an enormous change in and of itself. And I think that the uh, campus itself has changed. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, the role of the colleges has changed, uh, for example. Uh, the colleges to have, have evolved today into a place that's really a community for first year and second year students rather than trying to be all things to all people. Mm -hmm. I think that's been a huge benefit. Mm -hmm. We've grown graduate programs in virtually every field uh, mm -hmm. now so, so that ev almost every faculty member on campus now has access to PhD students mm -hmm. uh, uh, to train. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the campus has grown and departments, you know, when I arrived, astronomy was probably the only well-known department on campus. Maybe HISCON, History of Consciousness as well. Mm -hmm. 
But um, today, there's there's dozens of departments that are very highly ranked na uh, nationally. So um, that's changed as well. So the campus has fundamentally changed in, in terms of its, its its status. It's also changed in terms of its student body. Um, I don't again remember the statistics when I arrived, but today we have a you know I said. You know, what, 42% first-generation students, uh, underrepresented minorities represent a significant fraction of our student population. Mm -hmm. We are now, we've been a Hispanic-serving institution for about five years now. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, we've really, we changed in that regard as well. So all of that, I think, has been really very, very good. One other thing that's happened, though, is that we are overcrowded. Mm -hmm. with, an, with inadequate housing, which is one of the reasons we're doing a big housing project on campus. Mm -hmm. uh, and, um, and so I think the state of the campus is very good. Going forward, really getting to the, bake, you know, the, the, the core of your questions, what do I hope is going to be happening in the future? I'm hoping that the next chancellor will be able to garner more resources for the campus, and that could be through fundraising, a new campaign. Mm -hmm. It can also be through uh, lobbying and and you know, in Sacramento, and, and creating a new norm in terms of how higher education in general, including community colleges, are funded uh, through the state. We, we've come a long way since the original master plan, mm -hmm. which, by the way, promised free higher education in California. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so I, that's one hope. A second hope is, is that within Santa Cruz, we can develop a, a way to uh, moderately grow the campus without affecting the local community. I think that's really important. I think it's mm -hmm. crucial that the campus retain the kind of good relationships uh, that mm -hmm. we currently have with the city government and the county government, for example. Uh, and that's one of the things I'm most proud of. That, that's work we did some years ago, and I think many of our local officials, people like Ryan Coonerty, do deserve yeah. a lot of credit for that as well. Um, so I, I'm looking for, I, I would hope that we would get someone who would do that. I hope we will get someone who will be as committed to increasing the diversity of, of our student body and of our faculty as we've been over the last few years. I think there's no reason why we shouldn't aim to have a, a student body and a faculty which represents the diversity of the state of California. Mm -hmm. And then lastly, uh, I hope we have someone who is utterly committed to quality. I think the campus has achieved a level of excellence that is completely underappreciated outside of Santa Cruz. Mm -hmm. Maybe we haven't done a good enough job uh, getting that message out, but I think we are remarkably good. We have been going up in national rankings, uh, uh, and I think, I think that should continue. I think, I really hope that the next chancellor is someone who can find the means to continue that upward trajectory for the campus. And I think the, I think the sky's the limit for where the campus could end up in terms of, the, of its quality and excellence. Excellent, good. Um, personally, uh, having uh, been at the helm for some years, what are you most uh, proud of in your accomplishments uh, as the chancellor? Uh, I'm, I'm sure you have uh, many things uh, that uh, have been you've been instrumental in, in making happen. Um, but what is what would you say is the apple of your eye that you just you, you love to see to happen? Well, I, I'd actually mention a few that I, it's hard for me to distinguish among them. One uh, I mentioned before the successful fundraising campaign. We'd never done that before. Uh, that was sort of countercultural to Santa UCSC, and uh, yeah. a completing that I think will make it easier to do the next one. Yeah. Uh, a second one is town gown relations. Uh, they were not particularly good when I stepped into office, yeah. and uh, again, it wasn't just me. It was a lot of local officials. But we worked together, and we got to a point where we started out where our, our, our organizations were not talking to each other. Today, our staffs work together. In each, in each area, for example, in the city government, the staff meets with our staff monthly, yeah. and they carry on conversations. A few years ago, we did something that was, would have been impossible the day I arrived. We merged our fire departments. We used mm -hmm. to have a fire de separate fire department from the city of Santa Cruz. Mm -hmm. But it made no sense, but there was not enough trust between the two entities to actually do something about it. And we got to a point where we could actually have discussions and ultimately make the decision that we would merge our fire departments. Uh, it's now the city fire department that serves the campus. And uh, more than that, I think it was a win-win situation. I think both entities really gained from that. Mm -hmm. So I think keeping that kind of relationship uh, there is, is crucially important. And that's something I'm, I'm particularly proud of. 
I'd also, I mean, I'm going to mention two more. Sorry, I can't help help myself. One is the increasing diversity, which I've already alluded to. I think that's been really mm -hmm. important. And then, I, then the increasing excellence. The fact that we now have so many programs that are nationally ranked. We have so many programs that are popular. Right now, today, you know, realize that um, in the year 2000, we couldn't fill our entering freshman class with California students. We had to we had to work very hard, and we had to take students who were rejected from other campuses in order to fill our entering class. Today, we have more than twice as many frosh applicants uh, uh, for admission than we can accommodate. I mean, qualified frosh, UC eligible frosh applicants. So the chance of getting into UC Santa Cruz is uh, entering frosh is about fifty percent if you're UC if you're UC eligible. We're also doing much better on transfer, uh, and I'm you know. I'm really proud of our staff for having d done this, but we've been last year we were under some pressure from the state to increase our transfer ratio so that it became a two to one ratio of two entering frosh for every transfer students. Mm -hmm. We were well below that because we don't have a much larger feeder college. Cabrillo is great, but they aren't a huge uh, uh, community college, uh, unlike many other campuses have. So uh, I put together a plan, and I told the state that we could do it. Mm -hmm. It would take us three years, but I promised them that in three years we would get to that two-to-one ratio. Well, guess what? We did it in one year. Wow. Wow. And so um, I, I think we have a tremendous staff there that uh, really works hard and gets stuff done, and I'm so proud of that. Okay. Sounds like you've, you've accomplished a, a lot in your tenure there. Uh, you know, thank you for that uh, and what, so many things that you've done in our community and to bring back, uh, uh, you know, that uh, interaction uh, between uh, the city uh, and some of our, our elected officials. That's, that's amazing. Uh, being in politics, I think uh, Al would probably agree to be able to have done that in the period of time that you did it uh, is, is sort of miraculous because it's, it's always challenging to have you know, agreement on, on things. Um, what, and we're actually running, boy, that, that happened quick. We're actually running down to the end of the show. Uh, so I've been given uh, six fingers. Uh, and what does, uh, real quickly, what does post-chancellor life look like for you? Well, I think, po I'm hoping post-chancellor life will be just as interesting as chancellor life, but maybe a little bit less hectic. Um, I've already agreed to do a new edition of my, uh, a fourth edition of my Understanding Our Universe book. Uh, I have some articles I want to write on higher education. I plan to volunteer to teach some classes, and um, I will stay on some of the or with, uh, on some of the organizations I now. For example, I'm currently the vice chair of the CARA board, which oversees the two Keck telescopes, the two largest telescopes in the world, mm -hmm. and I'll keep doing that. Okay. And so there'll be a bunch of other stuff, but I won't be quite as busy as I am now. Yeah, yeah, that'll be nice, I'm sure. <laughs> Absolutely, and my wife will be grateful for that. Yes, yes. Well, thank you for uh, for your time uh, and. If we could uh, uh, sum up, and, and we'll get each of us a couple minutes, and just to leave our listening audience with something um, that they can uh, they can think about uh, and they can just feel good about. Uh, maybe we could start out with you, Al. Anything that you'd like to say in a couple minutes uh, about Cabrillo and something that uh, is is just most you know on your heart about uh, leaving with our listening audience? Well, <clears throat> I'd like to instead use the time to talk for a second about George. Oh. Um, George is the third. Chancellor I've known in my tenure at Cabrillo. Um, he and I, have, uh, we did a community leadership uh, travel to uh, Colorado a few years ago um, to look at uh, some um, opportunities, what other colleges did in Colorado to, uh, uh, re regarding incubators and um, uh, startups and try to understand how that fit into the community. Um, uh, George uh, has been visible in uh, South County, been throughout the county, but in South County, it's not like he's not a busy guy to do that. And I'm just hopeful that uh, the uh, university, uh, in selecting a uh, successor, uh, pick somebody uh, along the lines of what George was describing. Uh, I've enjoyed the, um, the relationship. We don't. Uh, break bread uh, too often, but uh, <laughs> he's uh, always uh, um, uh, humble, easy to get along with, and very approachable. Excellent. Good. Thank you. And George, um, if you could leave us with a, uh, I, I think I should be, I, it doesn't sound right, Chancellor, Chancellor Boom. <laughs> right. You get to call him George, you know a little better. But uh, leave us with a few thoughts uh, uh, for the listening audience. Uh, it, it's something uh, that uh, 
probably maybe one of your last times that you get to say something uh, live on the air. <laughs> maybe not. But. Well, um, first of all, I want to thank Al for those very kind remarks and say how much I've enjoyed working with him and with the Cabrillo Board. One of the first things I did as Chancellor was I came and met with the Cabrillo Board of Trustees, and I was astonished to discover I was the first Chancellor who had ever done that. <laughs> and um, that. so uh, uh, it's just been a pleasure to work in this community. I think I'd like to leave the audience with a couple of important points and about the importance of higher education mm -hmm. and the importance of what we're doing and what the two of us represent here uh, in Santa Cruz. In the United States, 70% of all college degrees are awarded in public universities. Mm -hmm. So public universities are key to the success of the United States. Mm -hmm. uh, but unfortunately, uh, whereas 20 years ago, the US led the world in terms of the percentage of 25 to 30 year olds who graduated from college, we're now like number 17 in the mm -hmm. world. So public higher education is important. And I think UC Santa Cruz and Cabrillo College and our CSU uh, brethren are so important to the future, not just of our community, but to our state and our Excellent. to me that's important. Excellent. So much uh, for your service to uh, Chancellor Blumenthal and uh, we are, uh, we were I'm, I'm very honored to have both of you here uh, this evening to talk about the things that uh, are so important to each of you. Uh, this has been uh, community television and uh, it's let's talk with Lou uh, and um, I'm always just taken by uh, uh, people in the community that have such a heart for the, uh, what's going on and bring so many good things, and we've had two wonderful guests this evening. But I also want to bring a little attention real quickly uh, to our volunteers, our co-producer, Keith Gudger, uh, director, Karen uh, on graphics, uh, at cameras, uh, Dave Goldman, uh, and, and on camera, uh, Nick Kirkendall, and as an audio, uh, Rob Gray. So thank you so much for what you do. Uh, for us, and we couldn't do it without you. I, I am a volunteer uh, myself, uh, and, and I love doing Let's Talk with Lou. If you would like to have uh, any special guests and talk about special items, please uh, email me at lj2osto at aol.com, uh, and I'd certainly uh, will respond and, and get back to you. And if we can get uh, some high-end uh, guests like we've had this evening, uh, certainly I will do everything I can. But thank you so much for, uh, for listening tonight. And we try to tape this once a month uh, on, uh, on community television uh, of Santa Cruz. So thank you so much for everything uh, that you have both done uh, here tonight to bring so much great information. Um, people, when they're flipping through and they see the, the president of UCSC and they see the chair board at Carrillo College, uh, this was definitely a, an educational forum. So thank you so much. Thank you, Lou. Thank you. Thank you so much.